Alright, um, 4.3. Changes in demand. So, so far we've just talked about elasticity of demand and what that means. Now, um, we can actually shift a demand curve. Um, if you look, we have a demand curve. <laughs> That's what I drew for you, 4.1. Um, with our money on one side, that's awesome, and our quantity on the other axis. Well, we can actually shift the demand curve out, or we can shift the demand curve in. This is called a rightward shift, and this is called a leftward shift. Um, and there are reasons that we can shift the demand curve in or out or left or right. Um, so, learning objective one, identify the determinants of demand and explain how a change in each affects the demand curve. And then we'll distinguish between the money price and the time price of a good. That's all about opportunity cost. Um, learning objective one is quite thick. <laughs> Lots of stuff going on here. So, a demand curve isolates the relationship between price and quantity demanded when other, fa when other factors that could affect demand are assumed constant. These other factors are often referred to as determinants of demand. Okay, that's the important part right there, determinants of demand. Um, all of these are the determinants of demand. Consumer income, the price of related goods, the number and composition of consumers, consumer expect expectations, and consumer tastes. So first of all, changes in consumer income. We are all consumers, and our income is able to change. Um, prior to this point, consumers' money income was assumed to remain constant along a demand curve. I'm sorry, rewind that. I said it incorrectly. Um, along a demand curve, our money does remain constant. So if you're looking at a demand curve, um, our income has not changed. Um, our income can change, but that would produce a different demand curve. So suppose money income increases. Some consumers are then willing and able to buy more of an item at each price. So market demand increases. The demand, shirve, the demand curve shifts to the right. Um, an increase in demand, a rightward shift of the demand curve, means that consumers are more willing and able to buy, let's say, pizza at each price. Pause that for a second. Um, money income. So it says some consumers are willing and able to buy more of a item at each price so market demand increases. So if our income increases, if we get a raise, we may be willing and able to buy more of something. So our demand curve would shift to the right. Um, we may go out to eat more. We may buy um, more clothes. We may do a lot of different things if we have more money. Um, but it's also important to note that there are normal goods and inferior goods. Um, Normal goods are goods that are classified into two broad categories depending on how the demand for the good responds to changes in money income. The demand for a normal good increases as money income increases. Normal goods are things that we purchase um, just normally. Pizza would be considered a normal good. So its demand curve would shift to the right when money income increases. Um, there are lots of normal goods though. Inferior goods. Um, so in contrast to that, the demand for an inferior good actually decreases as money income increases. So um, examples of inferior goods would be like used furniture, used clothing, um, riding the bus, buying store brands maybe if you walk into Walmart and buy a lot of great value stuff. If you get a raise, you may treat yourself to name brand products. Um, so as money income increases, consumers switch from the inferior goods to the normal goods, um, buying nicer things, you know, new furniture, new clothing, um, you know, an automobile or a plane ride. Um, example, in 2008, um, President Bush at the time passed a stimulus bill. He actually put money into people's pockets. So people who paid income taxes received a rebate of at least $3,000. Um, we can discuss what this would have done to the demand for most normal and most inferior goods. So, you know, if people have an extra few hundred dollars in their pocket, they may buy more of normal goods and less of inferior goods because their money income increased. 
describe how increased income would have affected demand for movie tickets and restaurant meals. You know, if a family who doesn't have a lot gets an extra $300, they may go out to eat to a nice restaurant. Um, they may go see a movie, which they rarely get to do because movies are expensive. Why might it have had less of an impact on the sales of board games and other at-home forms of entertainment? You know, that would be um, things that we would do if we didn't have a lot of extra income. You know, we'd stay home on a Friday night and play board games with our family or cook a frozen pizza you know, watch TV, um, go to Redbox and rent a movie. Those would be considered the inferior goods. Changes in the prices of related goods. We've assumed the prices of other goods remain constant along a given demand curve. Okay, let's not assume that right now. So we can talk about substitutes. Substitutes are products that can be used in place of each other. Um, Consumers cho choose among substitutes partly on the basis of relative prices. For example, pizza and tacos are substitutes, though not perfect ones. An increase in the price of tacos prompts some users to buy pizza instead. Um, this would be a rightward shift of the demand curve. Two goods are substitutes if an increase in the price of one shifts the demand curve for the other rightward. On the other hand, a decrease in the price of tacos would reduce the demand for pizza. Um, let's see, uh, consumers demand less pizza at every price. So um, it would show us that a decrease in the price of tacos would reduce demand for pizza and it would shift the demand curve to the left. Complements. Complements are certain goods used in, comb in combination. Pizza and soft drinks, milk and cookies, computer hardware and software, um, airline tickets and rental cars, toothbrush and toothpaste, etc. They are all complements. If two goods are complements, a decrease in the price of one increases the demand for the other. For example, a decrease in the price of soft drinks would shift the demand curve for pizza rightward. So if you have more money, you're spending less money on soft drinks, you have more money to spend on pizza. Actually, scratch that. <laughs> if you spend more money on soft, sorry, if you spend less money on soft drinks, if soft drinks are, pe are cheaper, you're going to buy more of both of them. Um, I said that backwards. I apologize. So if price drops on one of the complements, you're going to buy both the, the product and its complement more because they go together. Imagine that the price of energy you use to heat your homes has increased 100% over the past year. Um, identify different ways such a price increase would affect your lives. Um, it'd probably be cold. Your parents are probably going to turn down the heat a little bit. Um, they may turn it off at night while you're sleeping. Um, what products would you buy more of? Uh, maybe a space heater. Maybe a sweater. Some warmer blankets. Um, a heating blanket. Um, wood for your fire? <laughs> what would you demand fewer of? Um, you'd probably demand like lower, well, you would demand fewer of, you know, warmth in your home. Um, you may not replace, you, know, you may not do a home upgrade that year because you don't have as much income, as much money to put back into your home. Um, how do these changes demonstrate changes? and demand that result from changes in the price of substitute and complementary products. Um, yep, so new home additions, we probably won't heat our swimming pool. Um, your parents may yell at you for taking a really warm and long shower. So changes in demand that result from the changes in price um, all happen because if the price goes up, we are going to change our behavior. Changes in the size or composition of the population. Um, the market demand curve is the horizontal sum of the individual demand curves of all consumers in the market. If the population grows, the number of consumers in the market increases, so demand increases. Um, if the population grows, the demand curve for pizza would shift rightward. If the population stays the same, but the teen population increases, then the pizza demand would also shift rightward. 
if you talk about a baby boom, would be just a large population of um, infants. It probably increased the demand for car seats and baby food for that period of time. Changes in consumer expectations. A change in consumer expectations would shift the demand curve. So first of all, prices. Changes in price expectations can shift demand. For example, if you expect pizza prices to jump next week, you may buy an extra one today for the freezer, thereby shifting the demand curve for pizza rightward right now in expectations of, your, of the price change next week. Um, or if consumers come to believe that home prices will climb next year, some increase their demand for housing this year, shifting the demand curve for housing rightward. If the expectations of lower prices, sorry, the expectations of lower prices have the opposite effect. For example, during the recession in the mid-2000s, people expected home prices to continue falling. So they put off buying one, shifting the demand curve for housing leftward. So they were waiting for them to continue to fall more, so they put off buying a house. Changes in consumer tastes. Um, tastes are your like and dislikes as a consumer. Tastes are assumed to remain constant off along a di given demand curve. Um, influence in tastes would be a family background, surrounding culture, peer influences, etc. They all shape many of your tastes. Taste, change in tastes um, are difficult to isolate from other economic changes. So economists really um, attribute a change in demand to a change in taste only as a last resort. They will rule out all other possible explanations before they say that it was a change in taste. Um, demand for many products is seasonal. How much would your family be willing to pay for a cut evergreen tree in July? Hopefully not much. Why are families willing to pay as much as $100 for this item at the beginning of December? Because we all want our house to smell amazing and um, decorate for Christmas. Why would a business be unlikely to sell many colored eggs in November or pumpkins in February? Um, yeah, colored eggs in November, we, we wouldn't have a real good reason for that. And pumpkins in February, I'm not sure why we would um, carve a pumpkin to look like a president but it generally doesn't happen. So how do these situations demonstrate changes in demand that take place as tastes change during the year? So during the seasons, um, people are very seasonal. You know, we generally don't buy bathing suits in the wintertime unless we're heading out um, to some really nice island with uh, warm sand and beaches. Okay, this is important. I mean, it's all important, but this one is a really, it's a tricky little thing to remember. Movement along a demand curve versus a shift of the curve. So here's my awesome demand curve. Okay, this is quantity and price. You're not going to be able to see very much. Okay, that's better than the last time. Um, a change in price, other things constant, causes a movement along the demand curve, changing the quantity demanded. So when price changes, you know, we've got, if price starts up high and then it comes down low, our quantity demanded changes. So a change in price causes movement along the demand curve. A change in one of the determinants we just talked about, other than price, causes a shift in the demand curve. Um, causes it to shift rightward or shift leftward, okay? So this would be a change in one of the determinants of demand other than price causes a shift. Um, a change in price, other things constant, causes a movement, um, which would be the red, up and down. Okay, we have to keep those straight because they're going to try to confuse you during the homework and the test. Oh. All right. The role of time in demand. Because consumption does not occur instantly, time plays a role in demand analysis. So consumption is money price and time price. And we've talked a lot about prices and money, but time plays a huge factor in our lives. Our willingness to pay more for time-saving goods and services depends on the opportunity cost of your time. 
Um, if you just talk about the shell hammers, like we have three kids that are very active, a husband that works um, a lot, and myself who teaches. So we don't have a lot of extra time. We purchase more ready-made foods. Um, we have hired someone to clean our home. We are looking for someone to cut our lawn this summer. There's just not enough time for the adults to do everything that needs to be done with three little kids running around. Um, I do not have time to clip coupons. We still drive on vacation because buying five plane tickets is expensive, but you know, we're willing to pay a little bit more for time saving goods or services because the opportunity cost of our time is great. So differences in opportunity cost of time among consumers shape consumption patterns. This adds another dimension to demand analysis. And this is on your playlist. That's it. Nice work.